All right. Um, a viewer commented, I was doing some uh, voltage references, and a viewer commented that he's seen this before. Um, I think he claimed that Fluke used it, but I'm not, I haven't seen it myself. Uh, there's a 5.1 Zener and a 5.1 Zener, and then there's a, a 1N4148 upside down, or actually right side up in the, uh, in the chain here. And this one should have a negative coefficient than these two, and supposedly it balances itself out, and he claims that you could build this cheap. Um, so I wanted to test it. Um, so we're going to do that. This is set up so that you have about 5 milliamps of current going in here. And uh, we will monitor the voltage here, and we'll do it at room temperature, and then we'll put it in the oven, and we'll take it up to 40 degrees C which is a typical value for um, equipment. When you do temperature testing on equipment, if it's a kind of office environment, you know, a consumer type of product, zero to 40 degrees is pretty common. Um, if you want to extend it to industrial or military and stuff, it might go up to 70 degrees C, but 40 degrees C is, is, is a good place to be. So let's, uh, let's test this at 40 degrees C, and then we can do a calculation of PPM uh, per degree C, and see how this does compared to some of the other uh, uh, ones that we've seen data sheets on. So this is my little circuit down here. There's three diodes and some supplies on it. I've put it on a piece of uh, Delrin just to stabilize it. And uh, this white wire coming in is the thermocouple. Thermocouple is right over here, right next to the ground lead. And so it'll monitor the temperature uh, close up. And uh, we are currently at about 27 degrees C. Um, in the uh, in this uh, garage right now, and we will go look at the voltage and write it down. So, uh, so I'm going to write this down. We're currently at 27.1, and we're at 10.81740. Okay, I know it's changing. I'm just going to glance up, and I'm going to take the reading, and. Uh, we will then put it in a 40 degree oven. So let's do that. All right, so my oven is at temperature and we will just take the bunch of wires here and lower them. The Delrin also acts as an insulator because I have a little piece of metal that's being heated up down in there. And we will put the Put the lid back on and uh, start monitoring the uh, start monitoring the temperature and the um, voltage. So we're at 30 C, 31 C, now when you do these tests you need to take it up to temperature and let it soak. There's a soak time that allows the thermal conductivity of all the parts to soak in so they're all at equilibrium. So even though once we get up to uh, up to the max temperature here, they won't reach 40 C. That's what the oven set to. They'll be, it'll be lower uh, at the part, but that's okay. Um, we'll see how far we, far we drift off to here. Um, Looks fairly good so far. We uh, started out at 817.4 and now we're at 815.7. 815, we'll get down to probably 815.4. That'll be two millivolts. So that's not great. Two millivolts is quite a bit for uh, not even a 10 degree C shift, but we'll see. Okay, I'm going to call it here. I think this is enough data for what we're looking for. We're, we're not doing anything exact here. We're at 10.810. Uh, we'll call it 335. Three, 35, and we're at uh, 37.7 degrees C. Okay, that's enough for our test, and we'll do some math and see how we did. All right, let's get our calculator here. We'll look at our, our, our delta temperature. 
37.7 and 27.1. That's a delta of 10.6. And then we'll look at the delta over here. Started at 10.81740 and 10 we went to 10.8. 1035 and that was a delta of 0 0.00705 volts all right and it's otherwise known as seven millivolts um, so now what we want to do is we want to calculate uh, delta volts per degree C okay and so we're going to divide these two numbers uh, let's see, we have that number. I'm going to divide it by that number. We get um, 0 0.00665 uh, volts per degree C. That's our drift. Now we want to calculate it in ppm. Okay. So we're going to take uh, 10.817 for. We're going to divide that by 1 million, and that's going to be 10.8174. That is going to be, uh, let's see, let me do this in scientific notation. That's going to be one point. 0.817 times 10 to the minus 5. Uh, that is a 1 ppm. That is 1 parts per million. Okay. And so we want to take this number and divide it by the other number. 0, 0, 0, 000665. We're going to divide that by 1.0817. Times 10 to the minus 5. Uh, 0 0.000665. 0 Divide. And that is going to be 61.4 ppm per degree C. So that's terrible. <laughs> So that's just terrible. Um, so you can see that it's not, uh, oops, I'm sorry, it wasn't on camera. Um, so I took, uh, this is this is one PPM, okay? And I took the mount that we've shifted, I divided that by one PPM to figure out how many PPMs we have. And we had 61.4 PPMs, um, and that's per degree C. Mm -hmm. So we were looking at uh, devices that were lots, 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 lots better than this. So um, yeah, I think I'll do another video on uh, one of those parts that's supposed to be super cool. And we'll put it in the oven and uh, see if it uh, does a lot better than uh, Zener diodes. Uh, we might uh, try just regular Zener diodes too. I have a um, Russian Zener diode that's supposed to be very stable. And I don't know if it was stable with temperature or just stable with noise. Um, but we can uh, maybe try that out and just do one. Um, I think, if I remember right, in the literature, I think if you look at Zener diodes shifting with temperature, I think 5.6, a Zener diode of 5.6 volts has the optimum PPM. Um, I don't know why. The physics is in there somewhere. I don't know what the physics is, but... Uh, uh, it's supposed to be the most stable, um, and uh, this doesn't seem to be, uh, our, our clever circuit over here doesn't seem to be doing too well, so, um, I mean, it's within millivolts, but that's not what we want. We want it to be within microvolts, or tens of microvolts at least.